Hello you guys and welcome to a new video. She's got a book for every situation. I'm trying to film, but I'm losing the daylight. It's not it's not funny. Norway problems. Hello and welcome to a new book video. I'm so excited to have a new book video for you guys. It's been a minute. That's just not okay. So in today's video, I'm gonna tell you about 24 books that I'm excited to read in 2024. Some of these are from my fiscal TBR. I think half of them. The rest are not on my fiscal TBR. So I'll be able to read them if I am able to finish my fiscal TBR first. I'm really excited to show you what books I'm excited to read in 2024. I had a video like this last year as well. So if you wanna watch that, go and watch that. The link will be up here or up there. I never remember which corner it is. If you see any books in this video that you're also excited to read this year, comment which ones and we can read it together. <laughs> the first book I'm so 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 excited to read is Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. If you don't know this, I'm a huge fan of her and her writing and I love how she's so good at setting an atmosphere. Her writing makes it feel like you can smell the air of where the book takes place. When I read Daisy Jones and the Six, I felt like I could see smelled air literally the writing was so good she just keeps me entertained throughout the whole book i loved the seven husbands of evelyn hugo and they say jones and the six two of my favorite books this is in the same universe it's a different story but in the same universe the same atmosphere it takes place around the same time i believe so this is about mick reva and his family they have a end of summer party and then suddenly the house goes up in flames mick reva was a character in they say jones and the six like many many side characters Character. He was also one of Evelyn Hugo's husbands in The Seven Husbands. These books are all from the same universe and I'm in love with that universe. I think all of these books should be TV shows and I'm just, I'm so excited. So the next book is this one. If you know me, you know that this is literally my favorite series ever, 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 ever in the whole entire universe. I love that series to my core with my whole heart and soul. I would literally inject it into my veins. And the reason that I haven't read this one yet, I bought it the day it came out, the 29th of August, is it's huge, okay? This is a normal book. It's huge. Do you see this? It's huge. And it's not because I'm scared of uh, reading a huge book. It's just I can't physically read this when it's so big so i need a smaller copy so literally i'm just waiting for the smaller copy to come out and like what is this if you haven't read the inheritance game series it's about avery who lives with her sister and her sister's boyfriend who is really really toxic they are really really poor their mom is dead and one day she's at school and she gets called to the principal's office and there's a guy there called grayson hawthorne and he's like you're coming with me they go to texas and she finds out that she has inherited i think 48 42 billion dollars from grayson's grandfather Tobias Hawthorne. She did not know who this man was. She has no connection to this man whatsoever. She's like, what is happening? He didn't give anything to his four grandsons or his family. Like he literally gave them breadcrumbs of what Avery got. So she doesn't know anyone and she has to live in Hawthorne house for at least a year to actually be able to get the money. The series is about trying to figure out how and why and everything and lots of like riddles, games, mysteries. It's so so fun. She's like getting to know all the brothers, the Hawthorne brothers, which are Tobias Hawthorne's grandsons, getting to know the family, lots of family secrets, lots of secrets in general, lots of new characters. It's so, 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 so fun and you cannot put the books down. If you haven't read the Inheritance Game series, you need to read the series. This book is the fourth book in the series and it is in Jameson and Grayson's point of view. I'm so, 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 so sad that we don't get Nash and Xander's point of view because they are literally my two favorite brothers but there is going to be a fifth book i think called the grandest game or something i'm in love with jennifer lynn barnes writing go to the bookstore and read a jennifer lynn barnes book because it literally is so amazing super excited to see how this book goes and excited to get a new copy because this is huge the next book is this one which is every summer after by carly fortune i think this is a childhood friends to lovers book like set in the summer i think it's really cute i have a friend that loved this book and and I'm really excited to read it. I am not a person who loves to read the back of books, but I'm going to for you guys. I'm gonna read the back of this, and if you don't want to hear the back of the book, then go to this timestamp. Six summers to fall in love, one moment to fall apart. 
They say you can never go home again. And for purse phone, is that a name? I am not English or American. I am Scandinavian. I don't know how to <laughs> pronounce that. This is what it says. Purse phone. Fraser, that has felt too true for the last decade. Ever since she made the biggest mistake of her life, instead of glittering summers on the lake shore of her childhood, she spends them in a stylish apartment in the city, going out with friends and keeping everyone a safe distance from her heart. Until the day she gets a call that sends her ra racing back to Barry's Bay and into the orbit of Sam Florick. For six summers, through hazy afternoons on the water and warm summer nights working in his family restaurant, Percy and Sam had been inseparable, and slowly that friendship turned into something breathtakingly more. There are so many of these words that I just cannot pronounce today. Before it fell sp spectacularly apart, is that how you say it? When Percy returns to the lake, their connection is as undeniable as it has always been. Percy must confront the decisions she's made and the years she's spent punishing herself for them in order to determine once and for all whether their love might be bigger than the biggest mistakes of their past. Told over the course of six years and one weekend every summer after is a big sweeping look at love and the people and choices that mark us forever so a summer romance a childhood friends to lovers i think and i'm gonna read that in the summer in the boat at my summer house and then hi sarah if you're watching this you're probably not but anyways just in case I'm gonna read Magnolia Parks this year. I was on a book buying ban, but my sister got it for me for Christmas and I'm so excited. I know that Sarah Caroli, if you've not watched her videos, you need to go watch her videos. Actually, I'm gonna make a list of my favorite booktubers and put in the, the description. So go to the description if you need booktubers to watch. This book is, I think, like a bookish gossip girl. This is about Magnolia and BJ, and it just says, but Magnolia Parks and BJ Ballantyne are meant to be, aren't they? <laughs> Look at it. I just know that it's like love, romance, drama, all of that jazz, and I just, I, the covers are gorgeous as well. I'm really, really excited to read this. Hi. Hey. He loves me, I swear. He's saying hi. On to the next book. There are just so many books that I haven't read that are so popular. So this is A Court of Thorns and Roses, aka Akatar. I don't know what it is about. I just know that Destiny said well. Hey Destiny, if you're watching this, which you're probably not again. She loves this. I need a fantasy book that I can actually read. And I think this is gonna be it. So I'm gonna read the back of it. If you don't wanna hear the back of this book, again, go to this timestamp. I'm gonna read the back. Farah is a huntress. The skin of a wolf would bring enough gold to feed her sisters for a month. But the life of a magical creature comes at, st at a steep price. And Farah has just killed the wrong wolf. Taken prisoner by a high fey lord, Farah learns that her masked captor is hiding even more than his piercing gaze suggests. But as Farah's feelings for Tamlin begin to burn through every warning she's heard about his kind, a shadow is falling across the land, and Farah cannot fight it. She will lose everything. The first book in the sweeping romantic fantasy series by Sarah J. Maas. And I know that Destiny loves Sarah J. Maas with her whole heart. I hope I do too. Literally haven't read any fantasies ever. Then we have Once More With Feeling by Alyssa Sussman. If you didn't know this, I actually really adored Funny You Should Ask. I love the book so much. I love the setting. It reminded me of Taylor Jenkins' read writing, to be honest. I love these covers as well. One thing that annoys me is that this is glossy while Funny You Should Ask is matte. Then Katie Rose, I think that's what her name is, is living the dream as America's number one pop star. My dream. <laughs> Everyone wants to know everything about her and her boyfriend, Ryan Leneve, the hottest member <laughs> She's leaving my dream. The hottest member of adored boy band Crush Zone. Katie loves to perform but hates the impossible demands of stardom. Maybe that's why she finds herself in the arms of Ryan's bandmate, Cal Kirby. Quiet series Cal, who's always been a good friend to Katie, is suddenly 
Cal with the smoldering eyes and very good hands. One unforgettable night is all it takes to blow up Katie's relationship, her career, her whole life. Now, Kathleen Rosenberg is okay with her ordinary existence and leaving her pop star image in the past. That is, until Cal shows up with the opportunity of her dreams. A starring role in the Broadway show he's directing. And a chance to perform the way she's always wanted. The two haven't spoken since the joint destruction of their careers. And each of them blames the other. But rehearsals are long. Those eyes still smolder. And those hands are still very good. Despite everything, Katie can't deny the chemistry between them. Is it ever a good idea to reignite old flames? Especially if you've been burned in the past. Like, what? I don't know how I'm gonna feel about this book, but I'm really excited to know how I'm gonna feel about this book because I know that I love the last one and I know that a lot of people did not like this book and like gave it one star and stuff like that. So we'll see, we'll see. I am so excited to read this book. I know I should have read it a long time ago. It's A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. And I mentioned this in my last video about what I wanted to read in 2023. That I never got to it. I was in a big reading slump. So I'm super excited to actually get to this book. I have fell in love with like murder mysteries and mysteries and books in general. So I'm super excited for this. So this is about Pip who is trying to figure out a murder mystery that has been going on in her town where a schoolgirl got killed and then everyone's like, oh, it's this guy that did it. And she's like, I'm not that sure if it is actually. I think that's what the book, book's about. I'm so sorry if I say anything wrong about these books. I hate reading the back, so I would rather not read the back. I know this is about Pip and she's a teenager who solves murder mysteries, which is like exactly what I love. So I'm so excited to read the series and this book and the, I know I love it. Also, this cover is amazing. Then we have I Was Born For This by Alice Osman. Alice is the same author that wrote Heartstopper, if you didn't know. I bought this book because of the back. So this book book is about a girl who is a true fangirl of this boy band and then suddenly she bumps into the front man of the boy band and something happens. Girl, if there's a boy band involved, if there's fangirling involved, I'm going to buy the book. And I love Alice Holtzman so much. Great author. So I think this book is mainly about like believing and believing in yourself, believing in things, being a little delusional, I think. And I'm so excited to read this. I've heard mixed things about it, but I think I'm gonna love it because I live for this kind of stuff. So super excited. The next book I'm going to talk about is The Fine Print, which is the first book in the Dreamland Billionaire series, I think. This is about Rowan and Sarah. So this is by Lauren Asher. And if you didn't know, Lauren Asher wrote Throttled, which is F1 romance. And it's a whole series. It's the Dirty Air series. I'm going to get more into that later. But I absolutely love that series because F1. <laughs> like, if, if you say F1, I'm going to read it. Literally, I was over the moon when in the Inheritance Games, Jameson and Avery was literally driving an Aston Martin, which is a normal thing to do if you're rich and I was like oh my god as Martin just because F1 so it's about billionaires it's about love it's about money it's about lots of fun things and I'm super excited to read it I love the covers and I know my friend really liked it and I know a lot of people love the series over the moon excited to read this <laughs> Louis is looking at me weird. He's like, what in the world are you doing? This is The Naturals by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. I have this much left, but I wanted to put it in the video because it is a book that I'm excited to read this year because it's already been three weeks. This is a murder mystery. It's about Cassie who is 17 years old and suddenly she gets recruited by the FBI. Do you say recruited? I don't know. To be in this program with other special teenagers who are naturals is what they call it. Cassie's a natural profiler and Michael who's another one in the program he is a natural emotion reader and stuff like that. So so far so good. It's really really good and I know a lot of people love this series. I know a lot of people love the last one the most. I'm gonna finish this book today and I'm so excited to finish this and hopefully buy the rest of the series later, but I won't be able to do that until I finish my physical TV or so. And I recommend you all go read this, buy it. It's so good, it's so good, it's so good. It made me fall in love with murder mysteries. Also, Jennifer Lynn Barnes writing is just, I cannot stop talking about it. She's my favorite author. She's so, so good. She's just, your jaw will be on the floor 
your brain will be scattered you won't be able to think clearly because she's like she just uh, Jennifer Lynn Barnes is the author of a dozen novels for young adults. She has advanced degrees in psychology, psych psychiatry, psychiatry, I don't know, and cognitive science and recently completed her PhD at Yale University. She's now a professor of psychology. Like, obviously she's gonna be an amazing writer when literally everything she writes about is like how our brains work and thinking and mysteries and riddles and you know the last book i'm gonna talk about that i have on my physical tbr it's called the housemaid by frida mcfadden i think that's how you say it this is about a housemaid who is a housemaid for the winchesters it's a family and they're i think really rich and the mom in the family nina i think is insane kind of so one time the housemaid tries her dress and when nina finds out it's like it's too late and then something happens and then the housemaid is like they don't know what I'm capable of. I know that Sarah Raleigh loved this book and this is a thriller. I've never read a thriller before so I'm super excited to read it. Yeah I think it's gonna be really good. It's kind of short too which is nice. I have written on Notion the rest of the books that I want to read this year. So the next book I want to read this year is Happy Place by Emily Henry. I just haven't gotten to buying it yet because I don't want the huge cover. I want the small cover. I think it's about two people who are in this big friend group who always goes to a summer house or something. They go on a vacation together each summer. They broke up before that vacation, but they chose not to tell every everyone else so that it doesn't get awkward. So they go on that vacation while being broken up, but I think something happens. A lot of stuff, I think that's it. And if that's wrong, if I was totally wrong about Happy Place Now, I'm so sorry. I have read two Emily Henry books before, Beach Read and Book Lovers. Beach Read is one of my favorite books ever. Love Beach Read so much. Book Lovers I don't like. I'm like a bit in between, but I'm really excited to see. I love her writing so much, so I'm really excited to see what she has in store for us in Happy Place. Also, she has a new book coming out called Funny Story, which I'm also really excited to read, but that is not counted in this video. The next book I'm really excited to read that I have been excited to read for forever is The Bodyguard by Catherine Center, which is about a female bodyguard, actually, which I think is so dope. I think she's the bodyguard for a famous actor or something. I'm not quite sure, but she's the body bodyguard for this man, and I think they have to, like, fake date so that nobody sees that she's her bodyguard. I could be wrong. This is just what I remember because I don't have the physical copy. Really, really interesting, really cool, and I'm so excited. I love reading about famous people. That's my, like, not guilty pleasure, but that's my, I love it. I love reading about famous people in books. It's so fun. And then we have Flawless by Elsie Silver. This is the first one in the Chestnut Spring series, which is like a cowboy romance, and I'm so excited. I don't know much about it. Everybody Everybody loves it. Sarah loves it. Destiny loves it. Everybody loves it. My friend just bought it. I'm so excited to read it for myself and I have never read a cowboy romance before so I'm really excited to read that. I'm really excited to read this book and I've heard so many good things about it literally and I love the covers. Do you see this? It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. I know I learned new covers now so you know but those covers are nice like th these are the new covers i love them too actually so it's fine so the next book that i'm excited to read this year is love redesigned by lauren asher so this is the first one in the lakefront billionaire series it's again about billionaires it's the same author as throttled which f1 you know and i know a lot of people have said that you get glimpses like mentions i think of other characters from other books in her books i don't know what this book is about at all but if you didn't know my favorite color is purple and i want to read this book because of the cover and this cover is absolutely gorgeous also it's about billionaires and i love reading about famous people and people with money although i don't have any of those things but <laughs> it's fun reading about my future life <laughs> So honestly, this is a thing where I'm just judging the book by its cover and hoping it's good because I love the cover. Then the next one, I know a lot of people absolutely adore this book. Powerless by Lauren Roberts. I think it's like Hunger Game-esque-ish thing with like romance, like a different universe, I think. So I'm really excited to read this. It's fantasy and I want to get into the fantasy world in 2024. I need to read it. I need to read it. And also the cover is gorgeous. I'm literally judging books by their covers. I don't know what any of these books are about. 
So the next book that I really want to get to this year is called The Long Game by Elena Ormaz. I think this is the same author as The Spanish Little Deception. I'm really excited to read this because The Long Game is like a phrase, like a sentence that I love. The long game when it's like relationships and they're like the long game and they're waiting for each other and they're waiting for the right moment to be together. If you watched Girl Meets World, it's like this thing where Maya falls in love with a guy who's three years older than her and he's like, no, you're you're too young. And then I haven't watched that season yet. I just seen it on TikTok and I'm literally watching it right now. At the end of the season or something, he's like, okay, so we're playing the long game, like waiting for each other. I'm like, That's why I want to read The Long Game. I don't know if that's what it's about, but I just want to read The Long Game because of the title. I love that title. It's literally my... <sighs> so the next book I want to read in 2024 is called Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross. It's the first one in the Letters of Enchantment series. I think it's two, so I think it's a duology. At least so far, I don't know if there are more books coming out, but I know a lot of people love this book. I think it's fantasy. I'm not quite sure, but I know a lot of people love this book and I just, I basically just want to read what everybody else loves. So then I want to read When in Rome by Sarah Adams. I think it's about a girl who has a motor stop or something where her car breaks down in the middle of somewhere called Called Rome in America, I believe. I'm not quite sure, but I think that's the case. And then she meets this guy, and I think they kind of fall in love or something. When in Rome, like it's Italy vibes. It's giving, it's giving Italy, you know. So the next one is Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaris. I know that this is a fantasy book, and it's quite a long one. The second one is Iron Flame and the reason I want to read it is because it's so hyped up on Tech Talk and on YouTube and everything. And also Celia read it and Celia loved it. I want to read it because everyone else loves it, honestly. This sounds like I don't have my own opinions. That's not the case. I just want to read what everybody else loves. Then we have Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber, which I want to read because it is literally the most beautiful cover I've seen my whole my entire life and also I know that Sarah, Haley, and Destiny absolutely loves that book. It's a fantasy and I think really heartbreaking. I don't know. I don't know anything about it else than it's a fantasy. I hate going into books knowing what they're about. I don't know why. I just don't love it. So that's why I don't know. I've heard so many good things about this book. Since I want to get into more fantasies this year, I thought that like I need to read this book. I need to. Also, tell me if you like paperbacks or hardbacks more because I hate hardbacks. We have three books left and now I'm gonna talk about a book that I'm so excited to read called Collided by Lauren Asher. It's the second one in the Dirty Air series. I've only read the first one in the Dirty Air series which is throttled. It's an F1 romance and this one is Liam and Sophie's book and I'm so so excited to read it. I am just like over the moon need this book now because I miss F1 so much y'all don't know. But I just found out oh my god I just found out that I'm gonna watch the first race of the season at the London F1 arcade. So watch out for the London vlogs. <laughs> so excited. Then we have Love Theoretically by Ali Hazelwood, which is a STEM romance, I'm pretty sure. I've read The Love Hypothesis, absolutely loved it. I have Love in the Brain, I haven't read it yet. And I have Loath to Love You, I haven't read that yet either. But I'm so, so, so excited to read it, so. So excited to get to love theoretically. The last book I want to talk about in this video is Carrie Soto is Back by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This is a tennis book about a girl who's, I think, a retired planet planetary tennis player. She was like the best. And then there is this one girl that suddenly is breaking all her records, I think. And she's like, no, no, this is not working. I'm going to be the best. Goes through like tennis matches, explains a lot about tennis, but in an easy way so that it is understandable. It's the same universe as Daisy Jones and the Six, Malibu Rising, and The Seven Husbands of Beverly and Hugo. And you know by this point that I'm in love with that universe. So of course I'm going to read it. It's about tennis. It's that universe. Of course I'm going to read it. I'm so, so, so excited to read that and learn more about tennis because there are four sports that I would love to watch more of or two of them I already watch a lot of. I obviously love Formula One and I love football but I want to watch more tennis and more golf so I'm so excited to get to that book and I'm also going to watch Breaking Point which is the tennis documentary it's like Dry to, Dry to Survive but tennis I think. I'm going to read that before I read the book. I'm going to read that I'm going to watch that on Netflix before I read the book. 
just in time. The sun is literally setting. That was all of the books that I want to read in 2024 that I'm excited to read in 2024. But I'm so excited to get back to this video at the end of the year and see what books I read and what books I didn't or what I thought about them and everything. I hope you love this video. I love making book videos for you guys. So I hope you want to come back to my channel and watch more book videos or travel vlogs. There are going to be a lot of travel vlogs this year. So stay tuned. If you got to the end of this video, I literally love you. You're the best. Bye. Love you.